Welcome back. This is these are a set of video a series of videos. We're making a light fixture. We've already set up the shared parameters for this family, but we haven't put any 3D content, haven't made an electrical connector, and we haven't made a symbol yet. Next, we'll be putting the electrical connector and hooking it up to our parameters. Now, normally you need a face to put this connector on but we don't have any faces yet and actually that can be quite limiting because if you change or delete your 3D content all of your hard work of hooking up this connector is gone as it'll disappear at the base the face that is the face of the 3D content so if you want to make your life easier and be able to be more flexible you can click work plane and then pick the reference level that automatically places it in an empty 3D content however You'll have noticed that when I did so, I picked unbalanced in the options bar, and we actually want balanced. So you can click your electrical connector and look at your properties bar and see that it's unbalanced. First, change that to balanced. You must do this first, as if you do it after, it may disconnect all the other work you just did. You'll notice when I go from unbalanced with phase 1, 2, and 3 to balanced, you only have one apparent load. For any other type of electrical system, you probably want to hook up number of poles to a parameter. However, you're never going to have a multipole light fixture, so we will leave this as one. The load classification, normally we could just pick as lighting, but we found that this actually doesn't work in Project World. Uh, it doesn't recognize this, this load classification, so we will want to create one. Since we already preloaded all of our shared parameters, we already have load classification ready. If you didn't see part one, please go check out part one to see how we did this. If you tried to hook this up the first time, you'll get an error message that says that it cannot be empty. So we first have to go fill it out. Find your load classification, pick lighting from here, and now, when we pick load classification, it won't give you an error. Next, we want to hook up voltage. Click on the associate family parameter button and press voltage. Same as with apparent load. Now you're all set. Now, if you would like to save this as your seed family for making new fixtures, you can do that. At this point in time, you may want to go ahead and do your symbols to load in here if you're not interested in creating 3D content. We're going to create our 3D content here and then we will open a new 2D family to make our symbol. To make the 3D family, you want to become familiar with your, your project browser and your views. If we click front, you'll see the reference level with our info connector in the Create tab, you'll find the Forms section where you can create different 3D objects. We're creating a very, very simple generic family here so that it can represent a lot of different fixtures. The more detailed you get, the more limiting it is because you have to have more types of families in order to represent all your different fixtures. The more generic it is, the less people assume about what your family actually is. And your family is more about saving information and less about representing things accurately in the 3D world. I would like to bit create a basic extrusion because we are just creating a circular fixture such that would be similar to say a 2x2 two two with a lens but it is circular. Now it gives you this default option where you can just click this make temporary dimension permanent. Now we can use this dimension to hook up to a parameter. Now this says label but it really means you're hooking it up to a parameter. If you remember from part one we actually already created radius as one of our parameters so that's an option for us to pick. Now if you click on your circle 
Remember, we're still in the create mo mode. We haven't finished creating the extrusion. You can do this before or after you create the extrusion, but I find doing it while you're in the extrusion edit mode hides this parameter and just makes it more clean when you're working on more complicated stuff later. You can now click in here and decide, say we want an eight inch or an eight inch diameter fixture, so we would type in four inches. Now you can click done when you're done creating that form. You now have a 3D content that will be the radius that you choose. The depth is automatically set to one foot, but we don't always want one foot. So I clicked on the front elevation. You can see where we have this fixture. If you've checked out my other videos, you know about creating 3D content with reference planes. So we're going to create a few reference planes. Now we're going to connect these reference plates with a dimension. When we click here, you'll see a, that it's connecting to levels reference level. If you hit tab, you'll see that we can pick our own reference plane that we've just created. It's important that you pick the right one. Next, we can hook this dimension up to a label. However, we never loaded anything but radius. So we'll want to create a new parameter. We could have added it in the beginning, but frankly, I forgot. We've added radius, so it's pretty easy. We can go to shared parameter and pick fixture height. Actually, we're going to use fixture depth. We could use fixture height, but I like using shared parameters when possible, just in case you want to be able to schedule it. If you haven't created a shared parameter for this, it's fine. Use a regular old family parameter. For the most part, I don't think you'll need to schedule the height of the, of the fixture. So once you've done that, we can now pick fixture depth as the label. Next, use your align tool to match your created reference plane to your 3D your extrusion and click the lock symbol. Do the same with your other reference planes. Remember, always pick the place you're going to and then the thing that you want to align to it. So we're picking the reference plane first and then the extrusion. And always remember to padlock. This allows the parameter to drive the depth of the fixture. So let's say we want a 3 inch high fixture. Uh oh, we've actually created something that grows in a direction we don't like. This is a random height. So we need to make sure that these are aligned with your reference level. Remember to lock. Now, test it out. Now, it grows only in the direction, but is anchored at reference level. For now, I am just going to let our users use offset in Project World to define where this is, which means if they place this fixture without doing so in a very purposeful way, this fixture will land on the floor. So it's very important that you have educated users who know to type in uh, an offset for fixtures that are free. Um, 
we have this as a new sort of a new way we're doing things with families now so I think your users are pretty used to free um, and also it won't show up in rep in a reflected ceiling plan and they'll kind of go wait where did it go and that'll remind them to set in an offset another thing you can do is in your family name you can type the words free as opposed to FB FB being face based and free being not hosted So we now have 3D content here. Now you may be saying to me, well, why can't we just use this? Why do we need to use a symbol? Well, in electrical world, everything we do is driven by symbols. So the actual 3D content, we will make invisible in, in plan view and in RCP view by using visibility settings. Because we don't want the 3D content to show, we actually want the symbol to show. And the reason for that is because we want to be able to use things like emergency shading um, and light and thickness and drive it with something that's consistent. If we always used the 3D content as our symbol, um, we might not create be able to create more advanced graphics like using arrows, having little T's to represent being wall mounted, um, those kinds of things. So to be consistent, we always use symbols. So that'll be in our next part. Thanks for watching this se section and please see the next part when we create a symbol for this new family.